I'm gonna preface this whole thing by saying, I'm not a mechanic. I am a technologist in the financial industry. I don't turn wrenches for a living, but I do like to work on my bike. I wanted to show you with this video that if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's really the reason that I'm making this video. What's up? Welcome back to J Street Moto. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time. I'm Jim, if it is your first time. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss any content and uh, share it with your friends. All that stuff is free to you and it helps the channel. It's interesting, today I looked at the uh, subscriber count and we're at 708. Happened to be the whole number of the sub that I served on, the Minneapolis St. Paul, and she's been long decommissioned. So on this video, if you watched the last one, you know that I have chosen the first upgrade that I'm gonna do on my 2024 Road Glide. Today, I've got Juan and David coming to the house to help me install what I bought from Two Lane Life, the thrash and supply bar parts that I bought from Two Lane Life. So let me show you what I got. And it was really kind of cool because when I opened it the first time, uh, Galen and and those guys have included like a boatload t-shirts from Stone Brewing Company and uh, this is the only one that's left because my son and wife and daughter all snagged the others that were in here so I just left that in there to show y'all you might get a surprise in your delivery from Two Lane Life so the bars arrived and the box is in bad shape but the way they packaged this stuff didn't matter Let's look at it. I have high bend bars. The tips are protected and the finish is protected on this on this set of bars. In here, we have a thrash and supply sticker, which is cool. Thank you for that. And the solid bushings and hardware to mount them because we are going to be changing the bushings when we do this setup. The other thing that's in here is, and I gotta tell you guys, I love supporting a company that has American made. I, do, I just do, you know, you call me whatever you wanna call me, think of me however you wanna think of me. It, it's, we need to support local businesses. We need to support small businesses. That's, that's what's gonna keep, that's what keeps this country alive. And then, we have another box from Thrashing. Ooh, and look. We have a picture of Lance, Josh, and Galen with the bikes. And they gave me a letter for, uh, for purchasing from them and supporting them which is cool and it is signed and that's not that's not fake signatures guys that's not something that was printed out those things were signed by sharpies then we've got some stickers for legend suspension some two lane life oh i had a two lane life patch that's really cool i got just a place to put that and we have a two lane life sticker another two lane life sticker and another two lane life sticker. And then we have the Thrash and Supply nine and a half inch risers and a riser clamp. So you know what we're gonna be doing today? We're gonna be getting rid of the stock handlebars and riser setup and we are going to be installing the Thrash and Supply nine and a half inch with pullback risers and uh, in black, anonized black and uh, high bend bars because I think that's going to be the perfect setup for me while we're in there we're also going to swap out the stock Harley bushings for the solid ones that thrashing makes next time you see me we're going to be in the garage we're going to get ready to tear shit apart later 
Juan and David are here to help me do this job. I told you I would show you kind of what you're gonna have to do. First thing we're gonna start with, and I haven't seen, like I said, I haven't said yet, two best videos I've seen are on Thrashing Supplies YouTube channel and Tulane Life's YouTube channel. Suggest you watch those for this setup. Neither one of those guys, though, pull the main fuse on the bike. I'm gonna do that first, because I don't like fucking around with electrical shit and having power still there. All you need to do is touch the wrong damn wire and you just shorted something and caused a problem. So, first thing I'm gonna do is pull the main fuse. That's simple to do. Clutch side saddlebag comes off, this cover comes off, and the main fuse is in there. That's what I use to hold my saddlebags. So, the cover's off. You see we've exposed the top clamp now. Like I said, Thrash and Supply and Tulane Life both have videos on this. Uh, I sent something to Cole Seeley because they do it two different ways. One way to do it is to pull the top clamp completely. The other way to do it is to change them with the top clamp still on the forks. Uh, what Cole told me was he recommends doing the pull the top clamp if you're doing this job by yourself. If you do that though, you're gonna need to ratchet strap your front tire, front wheel, to like your engine guard, because as soon as you remove the bolt that it's the pre-tensioner or preload for your steering, that whole assembly's gonna wanna roll forward. We're doing it the other way, because I got extra hands here to help. And uh, well, it was nice enough to let me, let me use a scissor lift. So the next step is gonna be, we're gonna remove these two. Gonna remove these two T27s so that we can get the clutch and brake control arms off of the bike. We're gonna leave them on the bike and just kind of lay them on the gas tank wrapped up in Blanton's bags. I'll be back. You know what I'm gonna do? After we get the other one off, I'm gonna zip time together on the gas. Yeah. That way they'll stay up there in the middle. Yeah. So that's the easiest thing to do. Okay. Then we'll pull the rubber band back and then we'll pull the button. Is that a little button? Push that and pull it. Nope. A little tool. I failed to catch this on the other camera, so I'm just going to describe it to you and hopefully it'll make sense. Uh, at this point, we've disconnected the wiring harnesses from where they connect to, or, or you know, at the top clamp. So basically, the, from a wiring perspective, the bars are not connected to the bike anymore. There are a couple more things you need to do while you're there, though, before you pull that riser and I didn't video them so I'm going to talk to you about them here. One is the brake and clutch lines are held to the stock riser by a couple of clamps that are bolted onto the riser and I forget whether it's a 3 8 inch or a quarter but you're going to need to remove those bolts and take those clamps off. You don't need them. You're, the, there's no place for you to affix them to the thrashing risers when you put them on. That's the first thing. Second thing is there is a ground wire that goes from the top clamp to the stock riser. You're also gonna need to unbolt that from the riser. What I did was I just unbolted it from the riser it and put it right back where it starts on the top clamp. So I just looped it back on itself just to make sure that ground was, was still there. I did not get that on video, so I figured I would describe it here verbally, and hopefully, you know, if you guys follow your brake and clutch white lines down, you will see where they are attached to the risers. Everything we need to do to bars is that fucking box over there. This one right here? Yeah. Where the gas is going to stay Yeah, where the gas is going to stay there. So, so that's got that, you know, it's a little... I think the next thing we do. You said you already did the film. Yeah, I already filmed the unboxing. Remove the stock bars. So it's the next. Release. So, yeah. Um, first thing we do. We can do send you damn shirt. Dude, that thing had like five Stone Brewing Company shirts inside of it that they used as extra packing. That's the only one that was that would even remotely fit me. 
Megan stole two cameras. You stole one, Thomas. Stole one. Sweet. That's a double XL. It's because I'm going to swim in it. If you want it, it's yours. Because I can't wear it. Or is it? Girls would do. Yeah, explain something. Yeah. Okay. What the fuck? What am I explaining to you all? So this comes off, these come off. Mm -hmm. Then we take this off. This screws down. Oh, got it, got it, okay. Got it. It's a really simple setup. On the on the so, we've got the cables disconnected. Remember there is a ground wire that attaches to the stock riser, so you want to make sure you get that disconnected before you start screwing with shit. <clears throat> right now we are taking off the top clamp on the stock riser so we can pull the bars off. And you can stop it again. And turn it off. Also, okay. Bars are off. Still got to do the risers, but before we do that, we're going to take all this stuff off of the handlebars. T20s. So torque 20s is what you need to take off the uh, the controls from the handlebars. These are the ones that don't come out all the way anymore. Yeah, that's now your throttle control. Goes into here. Nice. So there's nothing that goes up the... You don't run shit through the end anymore. It's a lot fucking easier. And I'm thinking the new ones since they're kind of like this, the, the wire will go through pretty simple. I'm hoping. Okay. Now, are you reusing the wiring? Yeah, yeah, the wiring does get reused. Okay. I'm just trying to remember which way to pull it, I think. And when it goes in this way, I think it take it out. Yeah, so let me, let with, me with look. I don't know, but hang on, you got it. Oh yeah, yeah. I want, I want that not to be going through the bars. Let's do yeah. that. So, I'll just don't pull it. I'll just push and then pull some. Push. This is nothing like job for the road king. Yeah, remember how much shit we had to take off of that fucker? Or the street glide. Or the street glide. Pretty sure it's street glide. So, when I'm doing this side, I need the wheel crank all the way okay. over. Alright, they kind of held there. Yep. This yeah, it was turning for a second. Yeah, and it gets to a certain kink in that map. There you go. Now, I'm going to reverse it the same thing on the other side. If you're trying to do this alone, don't. So I apologize up front for the uh, quality of the grain in the video. I zoomed in on the 360 camera that I had recording the entire time that we were working on this. And uh, well, I just kind of paired it over to where I was at. Because at this time, it's like 90 freaking degrees. The garage is hot, and all we want to do is get the job done. But I still want to explain to you what I'm doing right now, how I choose to do it, I will tell you some other ways that I've heard of doing it and that I've seen done and maybe it'll help you at some point. So currently what I'm doing is I am running the stock wiring harnesses back through the new bars. How I choose to do it is I take tremor line, the stuff you would use to weed whack your yard. I take that, I run it through the bar, pull it out the hole, in the direction that I'm going to pull the cables and these cables go in by the way from the outside towards the middle is a good way to put it and you're going to insert them in the hole in the outside of the bars that is closest to the middle so I run the trimmer liner through trimmer line through there 
I use zip ties. I'll take a zip tie and tie it to the trimmer line while it's flush against the cable, the, the side of the cable that I'm pulling. Then I'll fold it over itself kind of to make a hook and I'll do another zip tie. You do not want to pull these wires through the bar. That line is there just to free up when the, when the cable itself or the harness binds. So you're gonna push and then pull a little bit, push and then pull a little bit pull the slack out, then push again, pull the slack out, push again, pull the slack out until you get the ends of the cabling harnesses to the opening at the bottom of the bars. Then you pull them out and, you know, finish doing that. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull until you have the end where the controls go. You have the wiring harness the way it needs to be at that end. That's what we're doing right here. So I thought I'd explain it to you and tell you how I do it. Some other ways that I've seen it done. I've seen people use wire loom, which I did buy some of that in order to cover the cabling harnesses going from the bars or the, you know, the output of the bars down between the risers and into the top clamp. I did put some wire loom there. Wire loom's a cool thing. If you know what uh, Chinese handcuffs are, the you know the things that as you pull them that material gets tight i've seen people put wiring harnesses into them after they've run the wire loom through the the bars and use that to get the wires through it's it it works pretty good um i personally have used trimmer line i've used uh rope i've used well some people if you have an air compressor i don't like I said, I'm not a mechanic. I don't have a shop. So I don't have a big air compressor in my garage. Sometimes you can take a uh, you know, thing that squirts air out of it. Um, I don't even know what the hell it's called. But you can take one of those and use that to blow the slack out of the line as you push it through. I know people that have done that. So there's several ways to do it. I will say this. These bars were extremely easy to run the wiring through. To put things in perspective, the entire time it took me to get the wiring harnesses through both sides of this handlebar setup and have it ready to install the controls was about six and a half minutes. When I did my Road King special, I had meat hooks on that one and they had some very sharp turns. Uh, after 10 hours of not being able to get the throttle side through, I gave up and took it to a dealership to have them run just that side of the wiring. So these were easy. David's were way easier than my meat hooks, but even David's weren't as easy as these. So it can get frustrating doing this part. The biggest advice I can give you is you never want to pull on the wiring harness. You constantly want to push it until it binds and then pull out the slack. You don't want to try and yank it through the bars. Electrical wiring, especially if you look at how at the gauge of the wires that's going into the connections for this motorcycle, that gauge is extremely small. And I can tell you, speaking from experience, if you stretch that wire, you can potentially damage the copper wiring inside of it. I didn't find it out for two years after installing my uh, the bars on my Road King. And all of a sudden, none of the, none of the shit on my clutch side worked. I couldn't get the high beams to turn on. I couldn't get the cruise control to set. I couldn't get the left turn signal to operate. I could not uh, cycle through, you know, like the odometer settings on it. So just keep in mind, you can damage the cabling if you do this incorrectly. The best way to do it is to push the wire in until you, until you feel it not pushing in anymore and then just kind of easily pull that slack out and then push it in some more and then pull the slack out. Like I said, it took me six and a half minutes to do it this way. So hopefully that'll help you if you're doing a job like this. So we finally got the risers off, the old ones. Um, those three quarter inch bolts under there, be careful. Harley puts red Loctite on them so they're not easy to get out. We're getting ready. I've already pulled the bushings, the old ones and thrown them away. We're gonna be replacing them with the thrashing solid bushings. I'm putting the black on top and the stainless on the bottom. And we'll run the bolts through. 
put the new risers on and start buttoning this thing back up. All right, so we got the first riser on loosely. Don't tighten them up. We're gonna put the second one in with the bushings. Then I'm gonna put the top clamp on so that I can keep it square while we torque it all down and tighten it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Loctite needs to get tacky. Uh, don't put it on when it's still liquid. So I've got mine bolt sitting in front of the damn fan trying to get sticky because we squirted it everywhere on the top of the top clamp when we put the first one in. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Tell this is the first time I've used Loctite. Right now we are torquing the bolts that go from underneath the top clamp into the risers. Those are, again, three quarter inch is what you're gonna need with an extension and you're gonna need a torque wrench. The specs for it right out of the service manual call for 30 to 40 foot pounds. And we did put blue Loctite on both of those bolts. We chose to go with the 40 foot pounds. Uh, I tend to go on the higher side instead of the lower side. I've had stuff you know, rattle loose on me in the past. So I go on the higher side. So one of the reasons that I'm voiceovering this is because we did have some music playing in the background while we were doing this work. And I'm worried about the YouTube copyright police coming after me, even though that music is not inserted by me for any kind of artistic reasoning. So I'll just get that out of the way. Um, at this point, what I'm doing is I am going ahead and reinstalling all of the electronic controls that go on the ends of the bars. And I'm doing that with the bars off the bike. It's, it's just, I find it easier. Uh, Harley makes it pretty simple. The controls, both of them have like safety pins in them that keep them from rotating past a certain point. So just as you're as you're putting them on, you ought to be able to find the orientation. And that hole is not small, so you've got some adjustability there, just so that you know. Um, so yeah, I'm reinstalling those. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind is number one, put the grip into the control assembly before you slide it on the bars. You don't have to do them separately and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get the grip into the notch it needs to be in in the correct orientation if you try to do it after you've put the control module on the bars. So you assemble all of it off the bars, you slide it over the bars, and then you put the back cover on and use the two T20 Torx bits to tighten all that up and kind of hold it on the bar. It's still going to rotate, so you don't have to worry about that piece. You will tighten it down and fix the orientation of it for your specific riding style when you put the perch bolts back in. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then we're going to install the bars on the bike. Right now, I am sitting on the bike. We've got the bars on the top of the risers and we've loosely put the riser clamp on the top. This is the time for you to set where you want those bars rotated. And that's what I'm doing right now. Once I got them set, we tightened them up. We did not torque them down, but we tightened them up. And then uh, I moved on to the next step that I was gonna do. And this is optional. I, I can't stress this enough. It's an optional step. I didn't like the look of the two wires coming out of the bar, going between the risers and down into the top clamp, just kind of hanging there. So I bought some three quarter inch wire loom from Amazon. I think I got 30 feet of it for like eight damn dollars or some shit. Um, I'm putting those through there now just to clean the look up and make it, you know, look like a little more professional job. Um, I've, I know it was mentioned on the thrash and supply, either the thrash and supply or the two lane life one that they did the same thing. So that's kind of where I stole it. But that's what I'm doing right now. Then we're going to start locking everything down. Uh, if I forget to mention it later, the torque specs on the riser clamp are 16 to 20 foot pounds. And again, I went with the 20 foot pounds. At this point, you're very near the end of the job. We are installing the clutch lever and the brake lever back on the handlebars. And you use the stock bolts that you took out of the perch clamp when you started this whole job. One thing to keep in mind, there are 
two black pigtails, one on each side. They've got a little rubber grommet that goes over top of the, uh, the plug for the wiring. Those have to be outside of the control module and you plug them into the clutch and you plug the other side into the brake. These things basically are your sensors for the clutch and your sensors for the brake. Once you snug them up, do not tighten them. Once you snug them up, you're going to get back on the bike and you are going to see if the levers and controls are in the right spot for you. This is your chance to rotate them forward or back and change the orientation to fit how you ride and what you're used to. Once you've gotten that, then you tighten that stuff down. When you tighten those perch clamps down, it's not going to move again. Now, a word of warning, because I did it, I screwed up. Like I said, I'm not a mechanic. On the brake side, you do have a brake reservoir up by where your brake handle is. It blocks one of the, T the, the T20 screws that holds the electronic casing there to the point where you cannot tighten it if you have not tightened it before you did all this. So when I went back to re-snug up everything, I had to loosen the perch clamps on the brake side just to get the reservoir out of my way and be able to access that T20 screw and tighten it down. Don't make my mistake. Don't repeat work. I, I freaking hate repeating work. I really do, but I had to do it this time because, you know, I'm stupid. I'm not a mechanic. So I figured I'd share that information with you. Do with it what you will. Once you've got all that stuff snugged up and it's where you want it while you're sitting on the bike, you're done. The only thing left to do at that point is to put the plastic shell back over top of the top clamp, click it back together. I did the front. I clicked the front back together before I clicked in the back. And then, you know, once you have it together, I suggest, and I think this was recommended in one of the other two videos I've mentioned, putting the 3 8 inch bolts in first. That pulls the whole assembly together and it makes it easier for you to get the screws back, screws back in. One of the, you know, two of the screws you're going to put in are just metal screws that go in underneath or, or right there where you lock your forks. The other screw though is plastic and it's one of these things that's like got a little grommet with it that you had to pull out, you know, and so you push all that back in and then tighten that plastic screw down. Once you're done, at that point, you're finished. The job is over. She's done. We're getting ready to take her off the jack stands. Everything goes back together the exact opposite that you took it apart. Um, really like the setup. It's pretty clean. No issues. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging out so long. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, click notification bell, share it with your friends. Always ride safe. This is what I changed out. All of that. Yeah, ready? One, two, three, shoot. Ah. Asshole. Really? <laughs> Peace out, bitches! <laughs>